Alright guys, today we're going to take a look at some more of these brand new Leashy tools that I got from Lockpicks.com. There's several new keyways that they just produced tools for, and today's the day we're going to take a look. The first one is going to be this SC1, and that's because the SC1 is for the Schlage keyway, very, very popular residential and also a business lock, a uh, commercial lock. The SC1 is the five pinner, and we're going to take a look at that one first. One of the questions I got after looking at the American lock last week is, uh, are these as easy to use on locks that don't contain security pins? Because the American, or actually the Schlage, was chock full of security pins. So it took a little finesse to get it open. Most residential locks or most Schlage's and quick sets do not have security pins. So you guys want to know if it's easy to get open without any training or any special experience. This one, five pinner, is designed for the SC1. And you can see it's pretty good bidding, works perfectly. Let's take a look at this guy. Let me shove this stuff out of the way. Get our vise over here. And I'm going to angle him just a little bit off center. And that way, when I put the pick in, uh, it won't fall inside of the uh, shadow. So here we go. We got the SC1. I'm going to push up on this lever so that the tip of that goes down inside of that little raceway. I don't want to try to shove in the lock with him sticking up there like that. That would not work out well. So hide him in the raceway and slide it all the way in until the top of that little piece sticks into the top of the keyway. And that way we know we've got good tension. I'm going to move this so you guys can kind of see everything. We'll move that back just a hair. All right, so we open up the lever. Now, how easy is this in, stand with st in a lock with standard pins? It's too easy, guys. How much tension? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> just apply Fairly heavy tension, just like that, and it'll force the pins to bind. You really don't need to worry about trying to figure out the binding order because this tool will figure it out for you. So apply heavy tension and just feel the pin, and you can see he's, he's springy. So we know there's a pin there, but he's not binding. Same thing there. He's not binding. He's still springy. Okay, there I got a little click. And just what you do is just line that needle up with a pin number and just pull down until you get a click. And until it won't go any further, when that lever starts to flex like that, that tells you the pin is set. It's not going to go any further. Line up pin one, just shove down until we get a click. I'm going to double check the pins as I go back. Okay, he's binding. Nice click. Number five. Nice click. And we are open. So when there are no security pins involved, these things are like super easy. The other advantage to this tool and all of these leashy tools, let me turn them a little more. I don't want to lock them back up because I want the key pins to be trapped in the open position. Once we're here, we can use this needle not only to tell what pin we're on, but there are also horizontal lines that'll tell us how deep the cut is. So we can write this down and we can have a brand new key made for this lock. So in this case, when I push them down to here, you can see it's a cut of about three or exactly three, pin four, cut is, looks like about a four, or no, I'm sorry, that would be a five. Pin three is a cut of seven. Pin two, also a cut of seven. Pin one is a cut of about a five. Too, too easy. All right, what if we have a six pin lock? This, this is clearly not gonna work. Well, they've also come out with the SC4. It's an identical pick in every way, except the key is a little bit longer, and it opens up a six-pin lock. We have a six position. Now, because this is the same keyway as the SC1, I was curious if it would work. So let's again slide it in. And again, I'm going to turn this so that's not falling in the shadow. Open up my tensioner, apply heavy tension. Now, when we approach a lock, we don't know if it's a five-pinner or a six-pinner. And here's how you find out very quickly. If you're using this SC4 and it turns out to be a five-pin lock, what will happen is you'll get a completely dead pin on position six. He doesn't spring up because there's no pin there, there's no spring there. But when you put him on the others and you can see the springing action, that's because he's pushing against a pin and that pin is pushing against the spring. So we know there's a pin there. He's not binding. He's not binding. Okay, we got to click on two, got to click on one, just double check everybody on the way back out, and we've got an open. This is just too easy. My point here being, the SC4 will work in both six pin and five pin locks. So why would we 
bother to have the SC1. I would just get the SC4 because I never know if it's a 5-pin or a 6-pin. Or just start out with the SC4. And if you detect a dead pin in position number 6, you know you're dealing with a 5-pinner. It works in both keys. That's also true for the KW1. The KW1 is for a 5-pin quick set lock. Again, very, very popular lock uh, in North America. And it rarely has security pins. It works exactly the same as this leg. This is the brand new KW5 keyway. So the KW1 is for a 5-pin lock, and the KW5 is for a 6-pin lock. I would probably, if I were looking to get some of these in my toolkit, I would probably just get these two, and I would never bother with the KW1 or the SC1. These work in both 5-pin and 6-pin locks. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal. If you'd like to know how to win, this week's giveaway is going to be all three of these. i gotta, got to get them out of here, man. Stick around, and I will tell you how to register. Thanks, guys. All you need to do is navigate to locklab.com, the tribal website, and scroll down in the middle of the page. You'll see all the giveaway buttons Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the one you're looking for is the weekend review giveaway, purple band. Just click on it. It'll take you to the registration page. Again, scroll to the bottom, put in a good email address. So if you win, I can get in touch with you, let you know. Put in a username, doesn't matter what it is, and click submit. When you're done, you'll get a green check mark confirming your entry. Thanks, guys.